Hello and what is up guys, Rai here and welcome back to some more automation and of course BeamNG Drive. So today we're building ourselves a race car and it's not going to be any race car. This is going to be a car to go up Pikes Peak Hill Climb. If you guys don't know what Pikes Peak Hill Climb is, it's pretty much one of the most dangerous tracks of all time. And in BeamNG, in the mod map that I use, we've got two options. We've got either a paved course or a gravel course. Now, in the 1950s, cars drove up a gravel course, so that's exactly what we're going to do today. We're going to build a car, basically a race car for the road, so we're going to shoot for 15 minutes or better with a rear-wheel drive massive engine race car. Now, the goal of this car isn't to be terrible, it's to be good, but let's be honest, guys, it's probably going to be pretty bad. Because, of course, 1950s technology, we've got, like, cross-ply tires, um, we've got a, a massive engine, obviously, and yet nothing else really redeeming at all about this car, to be honest. So let's go for, what, steel panel material, a uh, space frame chassis is pretty realistic. There is the chassis sticking out right here in this mod body. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and hide it, though, because, yeah, the chassis is, it's, it's, it's there, it's good enough, it's fine. Uh, we can probably go for alloy panels if we want, steel chassis material, though, and double wishbone front and rear, which is pretty realistic for like a high performance car of the time uh, just because it's narrow enough to fit so we can do a, a massive v12 probably honestly let's do like a what, 12 liter v12 that sounds pretty reasonable i mean it's literally a 12 liter engine which is not reasonable at all but that's okay uh, it's gonna be push rod though and just heavy duty cast for the pistons and con rods because this thing is gonna make uh pretty much insane amounts of power for the 1950s we can actually give it a really high compression. This is a, it's, it's a race car, I guess. We can give it a high compression. I mean, like, 12 to 1 is is incredibly high for 1951. But this is like a race car. This is like a car that is literally a race car for the road. So before we actually continue on, let's just hear what this thing sounds like. <laughs> oh my god. Oh wow, that actually sounds really weird. I did, I, I, why does it sound like this? Wow, that actually sounds incredible. That is so cool sounding. Let's actually go ahead and hide the bonnet for now. No, it doesn't doesn't actually hide. Okay, let's hide the uh, the chassis. Let's hide the body. Okay, so the engine's not there yet. Okay, we gotta get the engine in first. Let's do this. Let's do a drivetrain. We can do four four by four, which would actually be pretty crazy, but we're not gonna do that because honestly, we want a challenge. We don't need you know dang fangled four by four. Let's give it short gearing for now. So for, I mean, short gearing, relatively short gearing, guys, dang. Uh, let's give it open differential because we want to die. Let's give it, what, hard long life tires. So we can go 175's front and 175's rear. That is actually terrifying. The car can go 314 kilometers an hour. But yeah, we're not going that fast up Pikes Peak. I'm going to tell you that right now. It's going to be a one-seater with, like, basic everything, honestly. Just absolutely basic. There's just no need for anything. Safety. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't need it. Look at this. Does this car look safe to you? This car is not going to be safe. It's got 400 horsepower. It's going to weigh like pretty much nothing. Let's just do a sport tune. And before any tuning or tweaking, 3,200 pounds. That is actually really heavy. Uh, that's mostly because the engine itself weighs 1,250. So about almost half the weight, like 20, 30% of the weight is, is just the engine. Let's give it zero safety quality. That's going to save a bit of weight. Let's go for maybe a race tune suspension so that have a little more aggressive. And the brakes... Oh, yeah, they don't stop. They don't stop. It's not going to be It's not gonna be good here. Let's give it increased quality on a few things, because honestly, we can. And the cost. For under $50,000, you get a 412 horsepower V12 engine. No, wait, where's the engine? Where's the engine? A little cooler like that. There we go. That actually looks pretty cool. That actually looks pretty gosh darn cool. That looks so weird. Okay, we're going back. Sorry. We're going back to uh, performance... What was it? Performance mid? Standard mid? But honestly, this thing looks like an absolute spaceship. Uh, it looks really cool. I love there's this bulge here for, um, like, a an intake or maybe, like, a, 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 yeah, an intake or maybe a light or something. I don't even know. But, um, yeah, we're not going to use it for that purpose because we don't have any of those new fangled technologies. I want to actually change the suspension a little bit here. Uh, what we're going to do is design this car in a quick time lapse. Then we're going to go over the design. I might tweak the engine and stuff. Then we'll hop into Beam and G Drive. I want to see how fast this thing is a Pike's Peak. We have to see. So sit back, relax, guys, and of course, I hope you enjoy. 
Alright, so now we're designing our 1950s supercar, sports car, race car, thingamajig, whatever we're basically making here. So what I'm doing right now is arranging the engine to set it up properly, and now working on the back to add some big old fender flares that are attached to the body, adding some simple front headlights, and sort of playing around with the idea of a front intake uh, where the bulges on the hood. Uh, moving on to the front grille and some front grille details that I add on later, adding a side mirror, and working on some side pipes, which I do change just to two long tubes uh, that meet at the back. We're having a big dual exhaust at the back there uh putting a chair in the actual driver's cockpit of the car which i do change later on uh, adding the uh, fenders on the car and headlights to the fenders which i do change again a a nice big uh new grill has been added a bit of a power bulge being played with there and just changing the color of the car to a nice british racing style green and back to red and sort of toying with a front dash of the car the interior dash of the car adding a steering wheel adding a little dash piece uh rearranging the engine a bit more because i'm still not too sure uh, how functional it's going to be because it's it's not functional at all i've added a steering wheel and pedals now uh changing the driver's seat uh, adding a shifter and then i'm going to add a sort of uh some interior stuff like gauges dials uh, and a bit of a carpet in the front of the car or more of like a, a foot footwell area i don't i don't really know to be honest uh adding a rear badge and some side badges uh, changing the wheels and changing the color and adding a bit of details to the front fenders as well and in front of us is the 1951 harriet hr proto pp Finally, we are in BMG Drive. This is Pike's Peak. Now, we're going to go for a bit of a fly real quick here before we actually start the car and listen to it because it sounds uh, pretty gosh darn crazy. So this is Pike's Peak here. It's a gravel course. This one's 100% gravel. we got to fly all the way. Can we go faster? All the way up this entire mountain as it's gravel. All the way. Keep. We're going to keep going here. All the way. And it keeps going up higher and higher and higher. All up here. All over here. Up here. All the way, all the way up until the very top right. Yeah, right here. Okay, so until right, right here. So it's uh, it's it's pretty big. I honestly don't know where we started. Where do we start? I don't know. Uh, but this is pretty much one of the most deadly tracks ever. Uh, and we're gonna try to do that in a like a 1950s. Is this a sports car? This is like the first supercar, basically. Now uh, imagine our guy, our 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 designer, our our company. Just took a normal sports car or like more maybe like a, a lightweight sort of kit car and shoved a massive v12 in it and and called it a day then that that's basically what this is this is the harriet uh branded vehicle we've got thick boy fenders on the rear and thin boy fenders up front and it sounds pretty gnarly honestly i have the volume turned down just a bit because the engine it's it kind of like peaks sometimes it's kind of weird i don't know if you can hear but it's, it's kind of weird at, at low rpms Anyways here, uh, we're gonna go for as fast as time as possible, but also not crashing and dying. We'll start off in first person, I guess. So we've got off-road tires, I think, on the car now. I did change that. And I did change how the car sounded. We got the turn signal on a little bit. We don't need that on. So, so far, <laughs> it's a little shaky. It's a little, oh my god. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. That's like a 15 minute course. That's, I think we're shooting for 15 minutes of time. This thing is absolutely bonkers. Like, I think a lot of cars that were driving up Pikes Peak on dirt, I think they had uh, tires to accommodate them to the terrain, and that's what we're trying to do with our, our off-road style tires. The whole car visibly shakes on throttle. Oh my god! I honestly can barely drive this thing. That's not good. That is not good. Did we crash? No, please, please. Oh, this is like the worst track ever. Oh, wow. We are a little bit roughed up. <laughs> All right. Start off in seconds. Attempt number two. This is going to be like a pretty long recording session for a race. Because like, not many tracks are for like 15 minutes or so. Especially tracks is dangerous. I mean, if we had a faster car, it'd be like 10 minutes or less, probably, but no. It doesn't help that I don't really know Pike's Peak, like, incredibly well. So that's, that's, all, that's honestly a plus in my book. 
Now, I really don't want to crash, because this is a, you know, a tough track, but I also, like, want to get a good time. So far, I think we passed our previous one now, which is quite good. Lots of curves here, so we're going a little gentle. We can, may we can maybe just step it up a bit. No texture on the side. I like that. I like that. <laughs> if we're missing textures, it's okay. I don't like this this split part, though. That's scary. It's breaking here. We're turning. I do know some of the track. I do know some of Pike's Beach. I know, like, like a good bit of lower stuff down here. Um, not because they're, like, practice or anything, but because I've played on this track before in the previous videos and stuff, I think, and just just in general. Um, but I haven't, like, practiced today. Or practiced, I haven't driven on this track for, like, a long time. I wish the car shook less, to be honest. The suspension might be a little too stiff. I think it is race suspension, just in general. Um, and I think a less stiff suspension probably would have been a good idea for this track. Oh, 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 holy crap. Holy crap. Oh my goodness. We almost went off the ledge. <laughs> well, we were like halfway done. If we crashed, I would have lost it. I mean, this is the second attempt, so it's not like it could be worse. At the same time, if we mess up now, it is all over. It sounds like an airplane engine, I swear. This thing just sounds absolutely mechanical. Very interesting sounding engine. It is a 12 liter V12, which is a thick boy. I'm still 4,900 RPM, which is honestly pretty high for 19, oh, 1950s. I think there's a turn up here, another blind corner. Oh, it's so scary. Holy crap, I'm actually kind of afraid driving this car. This car is maniacal. It's crazy. We got three minutes to get to the top. I think we're gonna beat it. If we can beat 15, if we can beat like 14 minutes, I'd be thoroughly impressed. 15 minutes, I'd be happy. If we're over 15 minutes, I'll be a little sad, but that's okay. It's the last mountain up ahead, I think. This thing is a treat though to drive. It, it is a lot, things, a lot of fun. It's scary, but it's, it's genuinely, this is a lot of fun on this track too. It's tough. So I don't think we're gonna beat 14 minutes. I just don't think we have it. I don't think we have it in us. I am kind of spoofing it at this point. We're just kind of sending it. These blind corners are really doing it for me. Especially because up here, I, I can't recall the terrain up here as much as I remember, to be honest, for the, the bottom of the track. Honestly, just past 15. That's like, that's pretty much exactly where I guess 15 minutes and 5 seconds, if we're, oh, 4.1 seconds. 15 minutes, 4.1 seconds. That's actually an incredibly reasonable time. Like, like the cars we're competing against, like Maseratis and other things that would have climbed this car at the time, we're achieving about that in the actual Pikes Peak uh, race, etc. Which is pretty gosh darn nutty, if you ask me. 15 minutes, 4 seconds. Now, after a very, very stressful Pikes Peak race, which we didn't really break too much records. I mean, we had a very fast time, a very competitive time for real life cars. Anyways, um, I want to finish off, though, with a, a jump arena and see how far it flies. Now, this car has tons of horsepower, tons of torque. Uh, it's quite light for, you know, for, for a massive 12 liter V12. And it is genuinely a massive engine because we've made it bigger. Um, I want to see how far this car goes. Uh, and obviously, uh, we'll finish off the video with that, I guess. I'm going to guess, like... It's going to clear the jump arena, probably. It's going to clear it all, I'm going to guess. Oh, yeah, we do still have off-road tires, and they are cross-ply, so there's no grip on here. It's actually not bad. It's actually... Once we get going, it's actually quite grippy. 280. 280 kilometers there. That's pretty fast. I thought we were going to clear... Yeah, well, 450. 440. That's not bad. The car, <laughs> the car is not drivable after this. 
I hate it goes water. Why can't there just be more sand? I want to see my car better. Well, honestly, yeah, that is an engine bay and a half. Uh, the HR Proto PP did quite good. 450 in the jump rate, and it finished Pike's Peak in around 15 or so minutes. If you guys want to see me try Pike's Peak again, maybe with like a real competitive car up like a modern version of Pike's Peak with pavement or mixed surfaces, then let me know in the comments down below because I'm totally down to make a Pike's Peak, a real Pike's Peak competitor and see what type of a hill climb record I can get. I don't think we can beat any of the real hill climb records because they are professionals with years and years of practice and I'm just one guy uh, in, a, in, in a computer game basically. So thank you guys so much for watching and of course, as always, I'll see you next time.